while back I made a video on this part and we were talking about cutting 3D forms with technically a 2D toolpath. And that toolpath we used was called Swept 2D. Now with the release of Mastercam 2024, there's been some additions to this, this old toolpath. Uh, usually those old toolpaths don't get much love, but uh, this one has gotten some, and I think it's worthwhile to have a look at this toolpath one more time and have a look at those changes. So having a look at this original toolpath on this part, you can see here if I hop into a back plot, the toolpath is going to go around this part and it's going to keep going around in the same direction. We had an along chain that was a closed chain, and this is the result we would get. So what I did here as well is I did just a single portion of this part and when I back plot this guy notice what the toolpath does for this segment it's doing a zigzag back and forth so why are we getting zigzag in one versus a one direction in the other and how do we control that in the older versions of Mastercam there was no setting inside of the toolpath to control this essentially what's happening is an open contour is going to go zigzag and a closed contour is going to go one direction but we can control it through an add-in. So with our swept 2D selected, I'm going to hop over into the run add-in section here. And we're looking for a function called swept to R. With that selected, we'll hit open. And on this interface, we can now switch between zigzag and one way. We've also got options in here to enable some roughing cuts uh, in this toolpath. So what we'll do here, and I'm not going to look at uh, the roughing quite yet, but uh, so we're currently in a zigzag. We want to output a one way. So I've got one way selected. I'll green check it. And now we're going to see, obviously, there's some repositioning moves in there. But we will see this cut happen now, only going in the one direction. Okay, so all fine and dandy. Why, what does, it, why does that need to be improved upon? Uh, you'll see in the toolpath here that the toolpath is, in fact, locked. That means that we cannot go back in and make any changes to this and have it update with the same result. So if we wanted to make any changes to this toolpath, let's say we want to increase or decrease the step over. I can't regenerate it until I unlock it. And when I unlock it and regenerate it, you'll see it's back to that zigzag motion again. And I would have to go in and again, run the add in, swept to R, enable my one way. Let's turn those roughing passes off. Green check, and again, our toolpath has been rebuilt with this change applied, and the toolpath is again locked. So anytime we want to do experimenting, we have to unlock, make settings, rebuild, reapply the add-in, etc. So it's a bit of a pain doing all that, especially when you get into using some of the uh, roughing options, and when you're, when you're balancing the roughing options and trying to get the cuts that you want, it can be a bit tedious. So let's hop over to 2024. And there's that same toolpath applied to just the one section. We'll hop into the parameters of the swept 2D. And notice we've got the option here for cutting method built into the toolpath now. So now we're able to swap between one way and zigzag without having the toolpath getting locked. There's no need for us to run the add-in on this anymore. We've also got the roughing passes built in as well. So again, you're able to uh, enable rough passes and do experimenting with those roughing passes to get the desired output if that's uh, in fact something that you want to do with this toolpath. And on a related note, let me just switch over to something a little simpler and have a look at this for a second. So I think what you'll find here as well, when you're in the swept 2D and you're now able to do single, these single edges and quickly switch from zigzag to one way, what you end up might finding is that, let me just get this toolpath on the correct side here. As we're doing this one way, let me hop into a back plot. And as we go through, we'll notice that I'm doing a conventional cut, which I would like to change. So when we're doing that, we need to go into our geometry and this chain right here, this guy right here, the along chain, we need to reverse its direction. You can see it's currently going in this direction with which when we're on the cutting side of the part, it's going to result in a conventional mill and we want to climb mill it. Now in the past, what we've done is we come over here and we have to find the chain that we're after and we would right click on it and we would come down here and we would reverse it. So you can see it can be a bit of a pain, number one, to find the correct chain and then go through the process of a right click and then a left click. Um, with 2024, there's an improvement. We don't even need to know what chain we're after here in far, as far as the menu goes. We know it's this chain right here. You know the long arrow is the direction of the chain. I can just come over here, double click on the long arrow and that will flip that chain's direction check. 
And then I'll have to do some uh, adjustments to our cutter compensation here. So the along is going to change to left. We'll green check. And I guess I also need to do the across. So now we're going to be getting a climb mill cut when we're doing our one direction with our tool path. So that's an overview of the changes made to swept 2D inside of uh, MASHCAM 2024, as well as that bonus there is uh, changing the chain direction uh, quickly in your tool paths. Now, if you didn't see the original video here and you're curious to know more about Swept2D, I'll leave a link up above here and you can go and watch that full video.